All right, looks like we are live, folks. Let's see, get a click the link to share this broadcast. We are going to share some ridiculously incredible, exciting persuasion tips today. Um, I'm hoping that my guy, uh, Ad Lattimore, is going to be joining. Looks like we've got someone joining already. Oh, I got myself on the screen here. Uh, so in case you haven't noticed, which you probably have seen, uh, the past couple of days, Ed Lattimore, the influencer boxer, all around writing extraordinaire, uh, has been promoting a program that I came out with called The Best Way to Say It. It's the first complete system that allows you to write anything right the first time from a tweet thread to ebooks, full length books, without you having to figure out exactly what you should say. This whole thing writes itself. It totally circumvents writer's block by not putting you in the position where you have to figure this stuff out. So that said, it looks like our guy Ed here is going to be hopping on. Let's see. Invite guests. I know our guy Ed here wants to hop on. We're going to share a couple of tips. And the reason why we're going to share some tips is because there is this super exciting bonus that is uh, going to be coming up here uh, just about um, any time now. I'm trying to get Ed here to, uh, to join us. Let's see here, we've got a guest list. I'm gonna, uh, let's see here. We're gonna get Ed on in just a second. Let's see, Ed, you have to ask to join and then you'll be able to join and that will be the action. Okay, now I wanna give you all what you came for, which is persuasion tips. They're gonna be a bonus, but before we give you that tip, I hear Ed is with us. Ed, can you hear me okay? I to have myself be a um, face show, but I'm not sure if that works. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the way that it just simply works is that you can hear the um, the audio. So if your uh, your audio is coming through loud and clear, I can hear you just fine. Awesome. Well, uh, people know what I look like. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so I said, I, and I promised folks that we would be giving some super duper persuasion tips today. Um, they take, come directly from the, uh, the bonus, Write It Right, that's coming out this, uh, this, this weekend. It's only available for those people who decide that they are going to hop in and join, the best way to say it, until Sunday, that's tomorrow night, at 11.59 p.m. Pacific. Um, now, Ed, Ed, I know you're a big fan of the, the program. You've gotten a lot out of it. What's been the number one thing that you've taken away from the best way to say it, that particular program? Uh, the, you don't have to say it right the first time and you don't you shouldn't instead go back later and then restructure things to uh, you know w w like remove prepositions that's one one thing that really stuck with me is and I had to look up what a preposition was I wasn't exactly sure which which is like a failing of school or maybe my own ability or to pay attention but I was like, oh yeah, I always, you know, I, I give that advice, but I give it give it differently. I always, but but that's way more. Um, what's the word I want? Scientific. Uh, re reduce your your adverbs and also remove is you know you said like I think you said three prepositions uh, at the most in your copy because the way I always described it is that softens your writing, and what you want to do is sound direct and clear. And those are the and th those are the the kind of uh, confusing pieces of of speech. Like obviously they're not not confusing in the sense that you don't know what they mean, but they take away from what you're trying to to I guess deliver. What kind of idea you're trying to put into a person's head? Right, right. The wisdom of 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 trimming down just to the essentials and, and prepositions going to fewer than three prepositions in a sentence. Things like of, from, in, at, because. Now, why do we want to trim down to fewer than three prepositions? Well, each of those prepositions triggers a clause that you then have to sort out and try to visualize inside your mind. And anti-persuasive writing, cannot stress this enough, anti-persuasive writing forces the reader to try to comprehend multiple thoughts in one sentence. The more thoughts, the more images, 
you pack into a single sentence, the less persuasive it is. We are one track human beings. So I'm glad you brought that up, Ed, because that there, I mean, there's basically an entire training on just that of how to call the yeah. track. <laughs> and, and that's really, you know, I compared your, in my original review, you know, we kind of went back and forth talking about some of the, um, the things that I mentioned in, in my, in your review, I compared uh, your, your class to, to my like document on writing. And I, I just felt it was a superior piece. I, I, I you know, say that now, I think if you can go, unless you really want to like support me, you should definitely check out his, his, his course. But one of the things I always say is you, you try to get your sentences as singular as possible. You, if you can, uh, one subject, one verb, and that's excellent. And if you and if you do that enough, if you keep turning it on, you'll you'll have a nice, direct, easily readable, more more post importantly, uh, easily understandable uh, piece of content. And the other big idea I took from the course when you were editing, well, seeing you do it editing my piece, and then also hearing you talk about it in the modules is writing to one big idea. And that's something I teach guys in Twitter. That's something I teach guys in writing. As I said, you know, the reason why this tweet didn't hit as well as you thought it did, for example, is that, that there's too much going on here. What's that? And we always go back, what's the big idea? What are you trying to express? And a lot of times it'll be like this and that. I'm like, nope, too many things. Give me one clause. Like, like what is it? Like, what are we, what are we talking about? And if you can get a person to cut through all that extra, then they can create something uh, really engaging. I think engaging, I always call it engagement. Uh, I think p persuasion is, is similar. Like there's a, an overlap of the Venn diagram of persuasion and engagement. But a lot of things that make something persuasive also happen to make it engaging and vice versa. Totally agree. Totally agree. And, and I, what I wanted to do today is give some of the tips from, from directly from the program and talk through them. And I'm glad you, you started that. Um, another mm -hmm. thing I wanted to give, as I mentioned at the outset, and we can discuss these here and how they would even apply to your writing and everyone else who's, uh, who's watching right now. These tips are taken from the, uh, the special bonus that's available when you buy the best way to say it until tomorrow night only. It's called Write This, Not That. It's about the top 45 anti-persuasion mistakes that I see in writing. Imagine you put all this time, effort, energy, maybe even hired a freelance help you, and you put together this piece of content, sales letter, email, a book, and you just drop a doozy right there at the end that turns people away, that repels the sale, and you weren't even aware of it. And I want to give a couple of those to everyone who's watching right now so that you can have persuasion on demand by writing this, not that. One of the things that you never, ever want to do are, I'll call them broken analogies. You may have heard of these as <laughs> unsnatched metaphors. I'll give you a hilarious example. He was as happy as a hog full of slop over the moon. Okay. What is exactly is happening right there? Well, you're trying to now visualize a, a, a pig who's happy rolling around and then it's over the moon and it's like, what? Now, it's not very common that people make it, pig, people make it, the anti-persuasion mistake this big. I more so see it using words and phrases like this. You know, um, he completed that breakthrough and got the result. Wait a second. Is completing a breakthrough, is that what you do? You overcome a breakthrough? So you see what's happening there? Does... Yes. The word breakthrough, go with that word there, complete it. Do you complete a breakthrough? You know, he uh, achieved a goal. Okay, that works. You achieve a goal? Yes, you do. Another one, you know, the level of persuasion was so incredible. Wait a second. How is persuasion measured in levels? Was it level 100 persuasion or was it level one? So you see, I'm using level and I'm using breakthrough and the ideas are not connecting. There's, there's a disconnect. Right. And so the idea that I have in my head that I'm trying to put into your head, it's like the code is broken. Right. It's not getting from my head into your head the way I want you to think about. It. So you want to think about what is the most precise way. If I'm talking about 
this course is going to increase your level of persuasiveness. Well, what's the, where the level you're at right now, right? So, I mean, I would need to say, hmm, that's not really a metaphor or an analogy, like levels of persuasion that actually makes sense for me to use because what even is that, right? Now I'm, my mind is going off trying to think about what are the levels of persuasion and where am I at on them, which is not what you want me thinking about. Right. So I'm sure you see that often, Ed, when you're, you know, when you're reading tweets out there, you see these broken, uh, these broken analogies quite often. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're, once you see them, you can't unsee them now. No. And <laughs> I never thought of them in terms of, of the analogy, but it, I've always imagined it as a, a mismatched verb. Like it, it's just not, you know, like, like, what do we say? Um, Oh, like you can't have you can't have happiness. Like you know, you, you you want to be happy, or you are happy. You know, you you don't have happiness, and you, you sometimes you you see that. I think I think about that, and that's just sometimes it's the translation error. One of the things I've, I've learned is that not everyone on Twitter English is not their first language. You know, and that that's weird to to. to when you hear it, you go, oh, that's obvious. It's an international app. But it puts a lot of mistakes in context. And that's a big one that takes away because when you read it, it's like, oh, well, that doesn't quite work for my brain, you know? And, and it's one of those little things that even if you don't know the grammar, I, 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 get, I get so um, frustrated when I hear copywriters say, oh, I don't need to know grammar. And I'm like, no, no, no. Even if you don't know the rules, the rules are the, the how you've learned to speak. And so when someone reads what you've written and it sounds awkward, it interrupts their ability to kind of be persuaded. It, it snaps them out of the trance, for, for lack of a better word. I mean, when you have something weird, like, oh, you know, uh, I, I, I had a great, I had, I, you know, I, I had a great feeling about this. You know, it, well, well, okay, that, that's not not too bad, but but you know, you you want to feel great, you know. You have to make sure you pair the the correct uh, auxiliary verb. I think is the phrase or word with the the right adjective, right action that's going to follow. Otherwise, you end up with a weird, you know, weird sentence. Absolutely. That brings up another one Ed, that I wanted to talk about. Another anti-persuasion mistake, super common that's easy to fix, mm -hmm. which is being abstract when all you really have to do is be concrete, as in say exactly what it is that you mean. Got my notes up here. I want to bring that up. It was awesome. Great. Good. Cool. Amazing. Well, what do you actually mean by that? <laughs> okay. Okay. What's the concrete version of that? What about it was amazing? And this right here actually is what I do with my ghostwriting clients. When they'll tell me, you know, like, oh, I got a great story for you, Joshua. I'm this amazing lesson. <laughs> and it's like, what about it was amazing exactly? And then they're like, oh, you know, and then everything that comes after that is what should have gone in there instead of good, great, awesome, amazing, cool. You know, it, it, it was stunning. These words don't actually communicate exactly what you have inside of your head, what the idea is, what the experience was. So those are those are two tips we've got so far. Actually, that's that's three. You know, Ed, as you brought up the first one, fewer than three prepositions per sentence, because each prepositional clause in of at for become from etc those are another thought that you're throwing at your reader to try to figure out what it is that you're saying more prepositions more thoughts trying to have there be at once and then <clears throat> is what happens and unfortunately you're not able to get your messages across because so much is coming at them at once that was the first tip the second tip was stop using broken analogies and metaphors the level of persuasion mastery <laughs> how you measure what, what, what are the levels of persuasion mastery? My level of happiness. Well, what are the levels of happiness? That's not really a thing, you know? And then the third one is, is instead of being abstract, like good, great, awesome, concrete, you know, be, be concrete. It wasn't awesome. What actually was it? And then we're going to give uh, a, a fourth one here. I'm saving the best for last, Ed. But before I get into that one, uh, any commentary on the first three we just tossed out here? The abstract versus concrete idea, that's huge. You know, that reminds me of something I learned a long time ago. Whenever you're looking at like <clears throat> like an ad for something, I think they use uh, like apartments or houses that you should always be wary if the 
ad describes the room as like, you know, spacious or wonderful or great view or beautiful, instead of telling you this is 2,200 square feet, you know, these are 12 foot ceilings, et cetera. Like, and, and what that, what the person is trying to do is to get you to focus on how you feel instead of just telling you directly, because they know that like, if you, if you, if you are they think anyhow, if you just hear the, the direct description, you'll be like, oh, that's kind of trash. But the reality of, of telling these these stories or or in putting a right in is that you can't you can't tell a person how to feel. Like, like it, it doesn't work that way. Instead, you have to create the scenario. You have to use the words to paint a picture, and then they go, that makes me feel a certain way. That makes me think a certain thing. I can't tell you what to think. All I can do is present the information. And you go. Okay, that's the conclusion I want you to reach. I think I think you know that, that's all you you do in in convincing a person is, or well, that's what you should be doing anyhow. In persuasion, is that you should be presenting your points, your facts that support the conclusion you want the other person to reach. You know, if, if you ever watch a sad scene in a movie, the, the, the saddest ones aren't just like, oh, someone dies. I mean, what's what's the context? No, you have to, like, build up everything that supports it, a relationship, a story, uh, triumph, tragedy, just, just to show that the loss actually means something. And then you feel sad on your own. Just like, look, I don't have to tell you. Uh, my book is good. You know, this is why we have testimonials. I could, I could tell you till you're blue in the face that, that I have this, this great product on writing Twitter, writing on Twitter. But then, you know, we get the testimonials and guys are talking about, you know, I went from this count to that count. That's like real numbers. I mean, now you got to, now a person can make the decision and they can feel themselves. They'll read it and then think it's amazing as opposed to you telling them, no, dude, trust me, this is great. And then you're like, well, you read it and now you're disappointed because you, you've miscalibrated someone's emotion because what's great to me might not be great to you and now it just sets up disappointment and... right right and i'm glad you brought up the example of this of a room in a listing or in a property listing be described as a spacious versus how much square feet it is this one thing i'm about to give everybody right now this will this is a game changer this will take you from meh to money cash money. Here it is. It's called level three selling. It's actually a concept from a, a selling system called the challenger sales model. There's dozens of books written on it. It means used by Harvard. It's like they teach at Harvard Business School, right? Well, fortunately, the application of the challenger sales model to copywriting, whether you're writing a 300 word article or you're writing a 300 page book, could not be more useful. It goes like this. Level three selling means you're telling people what your product, your idea, your call to action means. That's the third level. That's where you want to be. What's more common is level one. This is what it is. Okay. That's the example you gave there, Ed. This property is 1,200 square feet. Well, what, do I, what do I do with that? I know what it is. You know, you, you look at the product descriptions, go to Amazon. So many books make this mistake in Amazon descriptions, or you're giving tips, you know, seven, seven ways to operate, uh, you know, to delegate more, um, you know, tasks inside of your business, uh, top 10 tips to, um, you know, build, a, build more systems in your business. And you say, here's what it is. And then you give what it is. And you're not going to what you're supposed to do that. Well, what does that actually mean? Okay. Level one is this description, tell just the facts, not very persuasive. Level two is what it does. So the example of the property, you know, okay, um, it's 1200 square feet. Um, because it's 1200 square feet, you can you can you can fit this the, this many pieces of furniture in it, right? Like, okay, that's what it does. That's what it does. You know, let's say I uh, let's let's use one of your products and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about one of yours. Um, actually, no, let's talk about the best way to say it. I think that's great because we're promoting that this weekend. So the best way to say it is a eight video training system on persuasion writing. Okay, that tells you nothing. Now, what does the best way to say it do? Well, it teaches you how to follow a step-by-step -step system to write any piece of content right the first time. 
from social media posts to video scripts, even to full length books. That's pretty cool though, right? You can sell people. But what is level three sales? Ah, this is what the key is. So here's how we would talk about the best way to say it from a level three perspective. Having a step-by-step -step system that essentially writes your content for you means that in our ridiculously busy world where we all have decision fatigue, we're all having to create more content, tweeting more and emailing more and showing up to meetings and doing more stuff online, we are constantly in creation mode, content creation mode. And because we're in constant, constant content creation mode, we're experiencing decision fatigue. We have to ask ourselves, what should I say in this email reply? What should I say in this video I have to do? What should I say for the sales page? What should I say in this blog post? You're constantly asking yourself, what should I say? Decision fatigue sets in. And as the day goes on, your content quality tends to decrease and the ideas just don't come as easy as they did before. Your writing feels uninspired because of decision fatigue. Now, what if you had a system that completely removed your muse, your inspiration, even that feeling of wanting to write? What if you could still produce persuasive content that was emotionally compelling, it was what it needed to be, it got done what it needed to be, even if you didn't feel like it? What if the content could write itself? Create at creation 2471 says I 100% agree. That is level three selling. Now you don't care it's a video course. You don't even care that it teaches you persuasion. You want the result of not having to think about the content as you're writing it. Show up at your computer, follow a step-by-step -step system, and know that at the end of the walkthrough, that process, you're going to get incredible content even if you're not feeling. People are like, where can I buy, right? That's level three. And you can do that with everything from your memoir to you know, a chapter in your memoir to the top seven tips for you know, uh, you know, ways to use CBD at home. Uh, make your own essential oils, right? Well, what does it mean? What does your story, your, your tip, your tactic, what does it mean? And then run with that and just start writing. And if you're going to be using the system, the best way to say it system, you know that the very first of the first of the two-step system is very simply the restructure where you just brained up all your stuff onto the page here. Thanks for the super heart at Carpe Dongtum. I appreciate it, brother. So what we were talking about right now is one of the best persuasion tips. It's level three selling. It's comes from the challenger sales model, which is taught at Harvard Business School. And we're bringing it into what it means for writing and how you're not simply saying what your product is or even what it does, it's what it means. So what about that, uh, that 1200 square foot space, what it is, that can fit your sectional, what it does, but what does it mean, Ed? That is the key. Let's let's tease it out a little bit to just show everyone watching right now just how impactful that is. What does it mean to you, Ed, to have a 1,200 square foot place where you can fit your TV, your coffee table, and your sectional? Well, right. That's that is my. I have to take my imagination. I have to go. Okay, right. This is. I feel regal. I feel like I have space. But but that's work on my end. You know. Like, like you want to talk about like game, and I'm I'm part of the <laughs> this going on right now, and that that changed my perspective entirely on writing effective pieces of copy, right? So immediately, when we're not telling you, okay, it does this, you should buy it. That's why, like, no, that, that's kind of dull, and you probably already know. But if I can, if I can get you to go, you know what? You wanted to be this guy. You wanted to have this experience, uh, and you, and you want it with as little work as possible, as little effort, or at least as little discomfort. This is why you need to use my product, and it's going to get you to exactly what you need, exactly when you need it. And, you know, and, and you know better than anyone else is out there. And you know, I'm just throwing in like you know generic comparators, but the the idea is, you know, at that point we would sub in you know, the, the words that apply and make the most sense to said product. But that, I, I never, because um, I don't have the bonus. <laughs> Believe it or not, I have to, have to, now I have to like grab it from you and, and see it. But that is, that is super useful 
I think that would change anyone's anyone's level of writing, whether they're doing copy, whether they're doing just tweets, because now you can go, okay. And then, you know, the, you, you're putting things that I've thought in such clear and precise language. And it's really awesome to hear and see. It's nice to know that writing converges. It doesn't matter like what the medium is, that the thing that makes a good piece of writing is a good piece of writing regardless of where it's at. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks at Writer Maven for the next super hard. At ATL Gray says, sell the problem you are solving. You are absolutely right. You know what the problem is that you're solving. The best way to say it is the complete writing system for how to write anything right the first time, even if you're not feeling like it, the news isn't there, or you just hate writing, or English isn't your first language. Ed and I are doing a special this weekend where if you grab the system for 99 US dollars, you get a special 45 minute training plus one page printable called Brrr, Write This, Not That. Some of the top anti-persuasion mistakes that show up in writing that repel your customers. Don't be the guy or gal who's out there being anti-persuasive. See it all the time. I beg you, please don't be anti-persuasive. What does that mean if you're anti-persuasive? Well, it means people won't click, they won't subscribe, they won't scroll, they won't buy, they won't rebuy, they won't tell their friends, and you'll be lost there sitting in a 1,200 square foot studio apartment uh, with just a couch and no significant other because you couldn't sell. Boom. That's what that means. <laughs> and, 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 and you says, make, me makes notes. <laughs> And you, know, you know what's really great about about the course, though, is is that bonus is is just a bonus, right? But the the meat and potatoes of the course, I wrote my review, and I, I genuinely believe this is that in in two twenty five minute modules before we watch you break down different pieces of writing and different styles and genres, in two pieces of writing, you get more information, useful information and more useful lessons, uh, I think, than most people ever get in a writing class. And, you know, that's why, why one of the, the many issues with the education system, but that's a different argument. The, the main uh, point of me bringing that up is that, is that bonus or not, that, that you, you learn so much about what makes a piece of writing hold a person's attention gets them to take a certain action. And even if you're not in the business of, of selling, uh, even, if, even if you're not in the business of selling, then you will be able to j just communicate better with the written word. Like my, you know, anyone here who, uh, who follows me knows, like I have a, a big blog and Twitter is a written writing platform. And I get a tremendous amount out of of the course like like i watched it twice i took some notes as well and now i'm thinking about okay the, the i have another piece of content coming out of my next newsletter right then y'all apply go back check apply go back check really uh really fantastic job man i just <laughs> uh, i have told you that before but now now i give you the the praise for for all that to see in here it's just really good job man I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I would I would gather the way that the system works is because it's been re-engineered from my own process. Um, on the, uh, the the Gumroad sales page, which should be in, I think it's in the reply to this video there on Twitter, for those of you who are like, uh, I want to be a level three writer so I can tell people what my real idea is, take it right out of my head and put it into yours with minimal... Uh, actually with no disruption in the flow. And it just, it becomes an auto read, meaning it's so easy to read, it just reads itself. That is based on the work that I do. I, I make 10 times more than my competition because I can put out about 10 times more quality content than they can because I have a system. You know, so many freelance writers, when they're showing up and working with clients, they're starting from scratch, you know? It's like, hmm, okay, my client wants an article on you know, how to write an operations manual for your small business. They want an article on the top 12 uses of CBD products for seniors, you know, and it's like, oh, gee, you know, and it's like, I have to feel inspired and the muse has to show up or you're doing that for yourself, right? I don't do that. I don't play the game that allows me to be beaten by writer's block or inspiration or motivation or lack thereof. I got a one page 
two-step system, the one that you're talking about, Ed, where I look at, okay, what's step one? And I just follow the system and I let the system do the work. Anyone can do this. And I think it even has application for eight to fivers, nine to fivers uh, in the corporate <laughs> world. Cause you got to write emails, you got to write resumes, you got to write reports, you know, you got to talk to the boss, you, you know, even via direct messages and explain yourself. Why not be maximally persuasive with your boss, with your coworkers? What is the long-term value to your career? Of course, to your salary. If you're able to be maximally persuasive with the people who directly affect your potential, your promotions, and your salary. That's pretty persuasive right there. <laughs> you're able to do that. <laughs> That's pretty persuasive, man. Yeah, and and even like in in even if you're not going to make any type of monetary direct gain from it. I I was thinking while I was reading, I mean, I think it just makes the writing process more enjoyable. Uh, and and writing is, is one of those master skills anyway. You, you kind of can't get away from it. And and if you don't have to write, um, I think you, you, yeah, I mean, not all jobs will force you to write, but most will. And by virtue of probability, if you're listening to this, you probably are in one of those jobs. And it, you might as well have more fun and get a little more power with your with your words. You know, they, they say the pen is mightier than the sword for a reason. Absolutely. Um, we just got um, at John Chorba on Twitter says to me, Joshua, three words of yours that just completely obliterated several mental blocks. Netflix eyes your content. Tremendous. <laughs> I like that. I like that. We're going to have to use that there. Thank you. At John my guy. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to take all your, your time today because you've got a persuasion course to dive into. Start using it. Uh, one last juicy bonus I want to make sure that everyone is aware of is, and this is whether you buy this week or this weekend and get the special anti-persuasion training, write this, not that. So how to not be anti-persuasive in your content, fix the mistakes, uh, is inside the program itself. It is the next best thing to hiring me as your ghostwriter. I am very expensive as a ghostwriter. I have clients through July 2021. So let's say you're not able to work with uh, work with me because of a, a budget or schedule. For $99, you get the next best thing, which is we're watching me work on a chapter for Ed Lattimore, an article for a pharmaceutical a pharmaceutical industry company, and working on a social media post, email, newsletter invitation uh, within the software industry. You actually get to see me working on it, tweaking it, following my system step by freaking step to see how I actually, as a creator of the system, apply the system. And what's so cool about this particular, these particular bonuses, where it's literally me just screen sharing, working on stuff, is you see the logic behind it. And it's like, oh, so that's why I don't do that. Um, that's why I do it this other way instead. At Sean NKL838 says, how do I get the special bonus? I don't see it on the web page. Um, it is automatically sent to you if you buy this weekend. I've got it all uploaded inside of Gumroad. So when you go to the Gumroad page and you buy it, you will within, rough, I think it's an hour, you will get sent directly to you the bonus, write this, not that. Don't make the top 45 anti-persuasion mistakes so sean gives a thumbs up that's how you get it. it'll be sent to you within an hour the automation takes care of itself you know and i'd like to think that this system is the closest thing you can get to automating your content writing without hiring a ghostwriter who's super expensive or is not available for uh, for a bit uh, um or just having to boost up your skills and try to upload become the greatest copywriter of all time imagine if you can write like a six-figure copywriter without having to hire one that is the great promise of that course. That is what it means if we're going to borrow level three sales again. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pause there and I want to hear from you. What does it mean to have the best way to say it system for you and your writing? Oh, dude, what I was gonna what I was gonna say when you when you brought up the next best thing and is having someone uh, is is the course to working with you. Watch it. Look, look, what what. what I thought was really interesting about the course is that the, the two instructive, like here are some straight lessons, learn this stuff. Those two modules are only tw like 25 minutes a piece. 
But then the when the breakdowns, that's the meat of the course, man. And like a, like an hour or two a pop, and you really get to see how you're thinking, why you make the the decisions you make, hearing it and seeing it out loud, and then seeing the, from the beginning result to the end result. That was like, you know, you 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 don't get to see that in a in a class that people pay freaking three four thousand dollars a semester for to watch someone actually break down the writing break down their thought process show you why they're thinking see them apply what they talked about in the other two shorter modules that by itself like that's why i said this is better in in many many ways i think i said when i reviewed it like anyone who's serious about creating a writing course they have to follow this method now because it's so instructive and it's so powerful and and I wouldn't be surprised if you get someone who wanted you to just write for them from it, but I don't. But but you don't need to. Like it really is a complete system. Like it, it's something I'm I'm applying right to my writing right now. And I'll as I go back because I got a, tons of rewrites, which is actually how we connected. Anyway, you heard about me doing some rewrites, and I'll I'll get to apply and I'll get to see you know. And and because a lot of it's on my website, I also get the metrics. To know, you know, what's working? Are people staying longer? Or are they 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 leaving? Did I mess up? You know, how did I hit, hit there? And I, I just I've I've really I feel really good about uh, your course, man. I I, th- I just think it, it's a great piece of work. I'm not quite sure how long you were working on. I, I remember the kind of time span between when you reached out and then when it was complete. So I have an idea, and it definitely shows, man. It's, it's a good piece of work, and your your expertise is very much on display. Well, I appreciate that, Ed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I uh, want to give one last quick little takeaway for everyone. Um, this is a one-page system. What, what Ed's talking about, so many of these courses that you buy, whether it's from Gumroad or some guru or, you know, off of, off of you know, Teachable or Thinkific or Udemy, is very theoretical and abstract. You kind of have to remember it, and then you go and bring back what you've learned, whether it's copywriting or coding. And you're like, now, what am I supposed to do first or next? I've condensed the entire system to one page, black and white. You print it off from your printer. You stick it up on your wall. The entire course is literally in one page. So you can instantly apply roughly 10, 11 hours worth of content. We've also got a section in there on how to use search engine optimization, the stupid easy way. Oh, I didn't know about that yet because <laughs> uh, I, I didn't go through the client acquisition part because I'm just not, that, that's not my, my area. But the SEO stuff, I uh, was really impressed. I didn't know YouTube had a, a whole system for that uh, either. So, so yeah, if, if you if you want a good like introduction to to SEO and some on page stuff and how to do keyword research, uh, you really can't go wrong there. And, and and it's to the point now. I don't know if I would say SEO is copywriting, but I would say that you definitely need uh, SEO knowledge to integrate with your copy because you need. One, you need the content to be good for the computers, but you also need it to be good for the people. And you, and so you got to hit both. SEO teaches you how to do the former. Good copy, good persuasive writing teaches you how to do the latter. And you, you know, you break that down in the course. Absolutely. Well, Ed, Ed I'm glad that you could join me. That the, the 20 of you stuck around for the end. Thumbs up to all of you. Um, right here below this video on Twitter is Ed Lattimore's affiliate link to the $99 the best way to say it, system, if you buy it by this Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Pacific, you will automatically be sent the special bonus, write this, not that. It keeps you from making the top 45 anti-persuasion mistakes that even show up in the best copywriter's copy without them knowing it. Stop being anti-persuasive. Go from what it is to what it does to what it means, and you will have yourself a system for on-demand persuasion. And Ed, you take care. I'll talk to you soon, everyone. Peace out, and I'll see you inside the system. All right. See you. Uh Bye-bye. Now, if I can just figure out. Oh, thanks, everybody, for for showing up. Let's see if Josh can figure out how to stop the broadcast. Oh, I did it. All right. (laughs) Those of you who just joined, start from the beginning. You will not be disappointed. The inverse of which is you will be stoked that you watch this, and then you will become an on-demand persuader. Everyone says thank you. And I thank you. We rock. (laughs) Thanks. You take care, everybody.